All right, welcome back to season three of our show. And today we're firing up the cooker for some beautiful beef bones. We're going to show you how to get these trimmed up, seasoned up, and cooked up. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, so today it's beef bones. Let's show you how to get these trimmed up. So we're using a short rib today. I like the short rib. These were on sale. I got these at about $8.99 a pound. And they got some beautiful fat on here, which you want. I don't take the membrane off in the back of here. You leave that on, that's your buffer. So I'm just going to turn these back over and look at all that meat that you get on there. That's pretty crazy. A good amount of meat and this is heavy. That's what you want. A nice meaty bone. If you buy these nice and thin and they're cut down really short next to the bone and they cut it about there, there's no meat on there. So they're good, but you're spending your money and you're wasting your money because you're going to cook these for a long time. You're not going to get any meat off of here. Let's show you how to trim them up. So here's all the silver skin running through here. So the first thing I'll do is take my knife and I'll come up under that and just trim that out of there. Just like that. And just let the knife do its job without taking off any of the meat. Just get that out. Now I'm going to just kind of hold it up in the air and let my knife do its job. Just like that. Until you cut that off. And there you have it. Very little meat got hit. And look at all that silver skin. So that's not going to cook down, so just clean it up and take it off. And take your time with it because it's a pretty expensive piece of meat. And depending on what part of the country you guys live in, or what part of the world you live in, you might pay a lot more for a piece of meat like this. So just cut it off and take your time. A little piece right there. take it off. It's not going to render down like this fat will do over here. That's the good fat. That's the fat that you want. And just to show you guys a little secret, this part is bare right here. So what I'll do is I took the bad fat off of here. And this is a lot of good fat. So what I'll do is take my knife and I'll come in here and I'll cut the good fat out just like that just to protect this spot I'll transplant it over here this way it's keeping all that nice fat rendered down into the meat so there you go and it'll cook right in and now I just protected that piece of meat and it's not exposed and I got some nice flavor in here from all that fat and that's what you want to do so we're going to get the cutting on here and we're going to meet you right back here to show you how to get these seasoned up. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. Okay, we're all trimmed up. Let's show you what we do from here. I'm just going to show you this. Look at the skins that I took the fat from off of here. So I took off this bad skin over here with the silver skin and I can pick up this whole piece right here and look how thin that is. You can almost see my finger right through there. I'm just going to put it right back over top of here and let it cook in. And I did that to all of these pieces. So they got some chunks over here, nice fat over here, and this will just cook in. You never even know the difference and it's going to keep that meat protected, moist, and create a buffer for it. Let's show you how to season this. I got some canola oil. I'm going to spray it with that. Now all this is going to render off anyway, so don't use any good oil to put on here. Just use a cheap oil because it's all going in the fire anyway. And it'll all render out of here and that fat's going to cook and push that right out of the meat. And it's going to go into the fire anyway, so don't use a good oil. Of course your salt. Now I'm going right onto the cooker with this, so I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes. And you want a good douse of that kosher salt. I'm not going to do the backs of here because they're bones. 
So we're not going to season bones. Just get the salt on. As much or as little as you like. And to be honest with you, sometimes I don't put any salt on here. I just smoke them straight through. Because the salt's going to suck the moisture out of the meat. And once you suck that moisture out of the meat, you're going to get less meat, believe it or not. So try to put it on at the end and not at the beginning. Especially if you have a thin piece of meat. These are forgiving. they got a lot of meat on them. So I can do that. But if these were really thin, I wouldn't even put it on at all. And I'll just salt them at the end. Good douse of the rub. Got a little homemade rub here with no salt. You guys know I don't put salt in any of the rubs and I'm dead against salt and rubs. You can make your own too. This is a homemade rub, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, a few more seasonings. And then sometimes I make five or six different rubs and when I get down to the end of that rub, I'll just dump it into the same bottle as another rub and surprise myself because sometimes you get some good seasonings out of there. And keep your rubs for pork, chicken, beef. A couple different rubs I put on different meats. So, just like that, it's over. All right, we're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna meet you out onto the cooker. So, we'll stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, we are ready. So, we got our bars in for air control. This is the pit barrel. XL. This is one of the biggest pit barrels they make. Great cooker. And we're just going to get our food on. Now you can see all that nice fat that's still on there, so I'm just going to put them around the fire. You can also hang these too, which we're not doing today. We'll show you another day how to hang some meats on this pit barrel. It works out beautifully. All right, let's just get this big boy in here. There it is. Now we got all of these in here pretty comfortably. They're gonna shrink up anyway. We're gonna let them cook down a little bit. Let me put my bar in. These are for air control. They're going to keep this thing at exactly 300 degrees. And that's it. We'll see you back here. And we're going to base these in the first hour. Don't go anywhere. All right, we're two hours in. Time to base these. Now, I'm using a spray today. I'm not using a ladle to do this because I don't want to cool down my fire. If I was doing a brisket, I'd want to cool down my fire a bit. But let's take a look at those. You can see all that nice fat starting to render. You're starting to see the bones. And this is the mist that I'm going to use. And when I say it's a mist, it's a mist. So that's how you want to do that. You don't want to cool down the fire. You can see how fine that is. Look at my hand. See how fine that mist is? That's what you want. Just a really, really, really fine mist. And I'm gonna close back up because I don't want my fire to get out of hand. But basically missed him really good. All right, time to close up and we'll see you guys back here in another couple hours. Stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, we are about four hours in. Four hours and 10 minutes. Let's see what we got going on. They're looking right. Just gonna feel in here. They're looking pretty good. And I'm just gonna spray these one more time. And by the way, I'm spraying these with vinegar. This is just apple cider vinegar that I'm basting these with. And it's just a light, light mist on here. I 
almost like what they use at the supermarkets to miss veggies. It's a very light mist. What that's going to do is just keep that skin nice and soft. Just like that. It's coming to the end. I feel they're a little drier than where I want them. That's it. All right. I'm going to let these go for about another hour. And I'll meet you back here, so don't go anywhere. All right, five hours and 45 minutes in. Let's check these guys. Now, I don't use a thermometer at all. Not for beef ribs. I use this. This is my thermometer. So what you're looking for is for it to go straight through with no resistance. It's easy right through. See this? I have resistance, so I'm not ready yet. I'm doing a little poke here but I'm not ready yet because I could just let it stick like that. Now, if you put this in, it should fall down and you should never be able to have it stick like that. It should just go right through and then fall over. Then you know these guys are done. So I still got about another half hour to go with these. And that's about it. I'll meet you right back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, six hours, 15 minutes in. It's time to pull these guys. I'm just going to show you this again. Let's get that down in here. And look at that, right down through. It's sticking a little bit between the bone, but she's right there. If I push that down, that's where you want. It'll fold down. That's how you want this. It should just go right through, fork tinder through, just like that. And there it is. We're going to pull these. We're going to meet you right back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, here we are. Season 3's chopping block. Beef bones. Let's show you what we got. Look at those. Beautiful. Let's spin those around for you guys. All right, let's get into these. We're just gonna take a rack. I'm gonna take this rack right here. And we're gonna cut into this, show you what we got. So I'm just gonna turn it around this way and I'm gonna cut it from an angle here. Let's just show you this. As we get down to the bottom, oof, that's hot. We're gonna just crunch through. Pull it back. I'm gonna cut this one. This will too. Just crunch to the bottom. That's why you want that membrane like that to protect that meat. Just cut through that membrane. That's the only crunchy part on here. I'll show you what we got inside. Look at that. Is that beautiful? Come on, can't go wrong with that. And we can cut this one too. It just cuts like butter right through. Look at that. And then when you get down to that membrane, just crunch it. That's it. There it is. You get to see all of them. All right, let's get some of this off the bone. Get a little pitmaster taste going on here. I'm gonna put this off to the side. And this off to the side. And we'll just cut into the smallest one. We're gonna go this way and just look at that meat fall right off that bone. Look at that, bang. Let's get a little pitmaster taste going on there. See how loose that is and just, ooh, that's still hot. 
I could have let these cool down for a little bit, but it's late right now and we're shooting. So let's get a little Pitmaster taste in there. Look at that. Beautiful. Excellent. Let's show you what this looks like on a plate. Get our plate in. And I think I'm going to choose that beautiful beef bone right there. Now over here we made a beautiful pasta. Andouille sausage, chicken, and kale. We're going to leave a link in the description to this beautiful pasta being made as well too. So you guys get a chance to see this one. This is a must see, this one right here. Beautiful pasta. And you get all that nice chicken and sausage in there and that kale. And a very healthy one for you too. Maybe we'll put just a little bit more in there. I think we'll put another rib on the plate too, right? Got some hungry eaters in the house. I'm gonna put this one right on there as well too. And that's it. There's your plate. All right, I'm gonna get organized. I'm gonna meet you guys right back here, so stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, and there it is, smoked short ribs, cooked on the pit barrel. Can't go wrong with that cooker. We got a beautiful pasta that we made on the side too. We'll leave a link in the description. That way you can see that pasta being made. It's got a dually sausage, some chicken, fresh kale. Thank you, we enjoyed having you. If you like this video, hit that like. And until next time, gotta get that little pit master taste there.